Yo, what it do, Sam? Yo, I got a word for y'all, man. I just wanted to share it with y'all. Anyway, Revelation 16 and 15, it says, Look, I will come as unexpectedly as a thief. Blessed are all who are watching for me, who keep their clothing ready, ready so they will not have to walk around naked and ashamed. So what's particular stood out to me here is I just looked, kept on looking at naked and ashamed. And I thought about the book of Genesis. I thought about the book of Genesis and the downfall of man. So I want to talk to you guys. I want to start it. So if y'all got your Bibles or whatever, um, Genesis, I want y'all to turn to Genesis 2 verse 8. Starting at verse 8. So this is after God created man, right? So God created man. He says, then the Lord planted a garden in the Eden of the East, and there he placed the man that he had made. I'm reading from the NLT version as well. And it says, the Lord God made all sorts of trees grow up from the ground. Trees that were beautiful and that produced delicious fruit. In the middle of the garden, he placed the tree of life and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Now, so I want you to think about this. The tree of life is comes from God. But the tree of knowledge of good and evil is the fruit of this world. That's the fruit of this world. So as we're going to continue on, I want you to guys to just, I just wanted to explain it to you. Um, I want you guys to kind of, kind of just flip the verse chapter three of Genesis real quick. So no, excuse me, not just chapter three, but Genesis two sixteen it says, Genesis two sixteen it says, but the Lord God warned him, you may eat freely, you may eat the you may, excuse me, but the Lord God warned him, you may freely eat of the fruit of every tree in the garden, except the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. If you eat its fruit, you are sure to die. So now God warned him about eating the fruit of this world, right? Now he didn't really explain to him in context of what of all this, but God warned him. He gave him a warning. So it's not as if Adam didn't know before the downfall of man happened. God, one thing that God has given us from, from the start of time is God has given us a choice. God has given a choice that we can either choose to be with him, we can either choose to obey him, or we can either choose to do what we want and go on our own way. That's just something that God has given us since the beginning of time, is God has given us a choice to make whatever decisions that we make. So if you walk away from God, you walked away from God on your own accord, you can't say God forced you, because God has given, given us, each and every one of us, a choice. All right. So... We're going to go to Genesis 3 real quick. And it says, Genesis 3, it says, The serpent was the shrewdest of all, of all the animals that the Lord God made. So one day the serpent comes up. He asks Eve. He's talking to Eve, right? Now, mind you, the serpent asks a question, meaning that he does not know. He does not know. So he says, did God really say, you must not eat the fruit? from any of the trees in the garden. Now, here's the problem. The enemy only knows what you tell him, right? I just want to be just want to stop right here. The enemy on the devil only knows what you tell him. He only knows what you tell him. So one thing about life is that if you move in silence, the devil don't really know what you're doing. If you don't talk, if you do a lot less talking and you do a lot more acting, he will never know what you're doing. Because he only knows what you tell him. He only knows what you tell him. He only has access to information that he's heard. Only has access to information that you've told him. Whether it be to other people or whatever the case may be. Talking too much. So Eve answers answers him. And she says, of course we can eat the fruit of the trees. Eat, eat fruit from the trees in the garden. The woman, she, the woman replied and said, it's only from the fruit from the trees in the middle of the garden that we are not allowed to eat. And she said, God said, you must not even touch it. You must not eat it or even touch it. Or you will die. If you do, you will die. So God gave them the warning and the serpent did not know that until she told him. He had no knowledge of this. 
he had not no knowledge that this happened, that this occurred, that God spoke to them. He was asking a asking a question. He was asking a question, something he honestly had no answer for, something he did not know. So the serpent being devil being a liar that he is, right? He immediately comes back very quickly, very quickly. He comes back with a lie. Now, John 8 tells us, it says, the devil is the father of lies. He's been a liar since the beginning of time. The lie, and, and, it's, and it's consistent with his character. The devil is the father of lies. The devil come to steal, he come to kill, and he come to destroy. But the devil is also a liar. The devil is a liar. So, he comes back very quickly. He says, you won't die. In verse 4, in verse four he says, you won't die. He says, verse 5 says, God knows your eyes will be opened as soon as you eat it. And you will be like God, knowing both good and evil. Right? That was it. He only knew that because she told him. So he immediately attacked her. The devil lied. He lied. He lied. And the only reason he knew how to attack her was because she told him. He only knew how to attack her because she told him. Mm. Excuse me. Excuse me, my beautiful people. But anyway, he said the only reason she knew how to attack him was because she told him. So the woman was convinced. She saw that the tree was beautiful. The fruit looked delicious. And she wanted the wisdom it would give her. So she took some of the fruit and ate it. Then she gave some of the fruit to her husband, who was with her, and he ate it too. At that moment, their eyes were suddenly open. Their eyes were suddenly open, and they felt shame at their nakedness. So they sewed fig leaves together to cover, to cover themselves. So that's what we get to talk about, naked and ashamed. Because of their sin, because of their disobedience to God, now they're standing before God. Now, because now, now, now they feel naked, now they're ashamed, now they're trying to hide themselves, right? Trying to cover themselves up. But here, but here, but I just want to keep on reading on. I'm going to explain to you guys something. So, verse 8 says, when the cool evening, ble cool evening breezes were blowing, the man and his wife heard the Lord God walking in the garden. So they hid. So they hid from the Lord God among the trees. The Lord God called out to the man, called to the man, where are you? He replied, I heard you walking in the garden. So I hid because I was afraid. Who told you, God replies, who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten from the tree? From the tree for whose fruit I commanded you not to eat. Now, Adam immediately blames it on his wife. But one thing about it, God charged Adam with the downfall of man because Adam was here first. Adam was here first and he told Adam. So this is what I want to say. They tried to hide from God, right? But I want you to know this. Nothing is ever going to be hidden from God. That one day there's going to be a point in time in your life that we're all going to stand before God and we're all going to stand before God naked. We're not going to be able to hide anything that everything that we have ever done in this life, everything that we have ever, every sin that we have committed, we're going to stand before God. We're going to stand before God naked and we're going to have to give an account for why we did this, how we handled our assignment and how we acted while we were here, how we presented ourselves while we were here. And we're going to have to stand before God. We're not going to be, there's not going to be stand before God alone. We're going to stand before God alone. Everything is going to be blameless. We're going to be stand before God. We're going to stand before God. We're going to stand before him. You won't be able to hide nothing from him, right? I need you to know this because the Bible says, it says, Revelation 16, 15, it says, I will come as unexpectedly as a thief. Blessed are all who are watching for me, who keep their clothing ready. So you don't have to walk around naked and ashamed. If you keep yourself ready, you don't have to get ready. Because the Bible clearly says, the Bible says, in Hebrews 4, 4 and 13, it says, nothing in all creation is hidden from God. 
Everything is naked and exposed before his eyes. And, and he is the one to whom we're accountable. So we're going to have to give an account of every single thing that we have done. We ain't going to be able to hide nothing from God. We're going to stand before him, give an account for everything that we have done. So I want you guys to make sure that you're ready so that you don't have to get ready. Make sure you're ready so you don't have to get ready. Make sure you're ready so you don't have to get ready. And I hope that encourages you because I want you to know something, that nothing is ever going to be hidden from God. That one, you can may hide, you may lie, you may think you do your dirt here on this earth, but one day you're going to have to stand before the king. You're going to have to stand before the father and you're going to have to answer to him. So I want you to be ready so you don't have to get ready. I hope this blesses you. I want y'all to have a wonderful evening, man. Wonderful night, man. I love y'all, man. Have an amazing day. Stay encouraged. Stay blessed, man. I love y'all, man. In Jesus' name, man. Have a blessed night.